Number one says, what is the value of this expression when x equals 5? So let's go ahead um, and plug 5 in for x in each of these. So I'm just going to take this polynomial and I'm just going to write a 5 over each of these. Okay, so we're just going to plug in 5 for each of these. Now one thing that I notice um, in this polynomial is that we have a 5, or this part of the expression is that we have a 5 minus 5 here. So this is going to be 7 times 3 times 0. So this whole thing is going to be 0. We also have a 0 here, a 0 factor here. 5 minus 5 is 0. So no matter what this part is, it's going to be 0. So then we really only need to calculate this portion. So 4, um, 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. So then 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24. So if you have a zero factor, that whole chunk is going to end up being zero. So none of this, if you notice, is going to need to be calculated. Which polynomial functions has these zeros? So remember, if these are the zeros, okay, then their factors would be the opposite. So if x equals negative 2, Okay, then if we add 2 back over to the other side, so if I kind of think about doing this, then I get x plus 2 equals 0. Here's your factor. So let's look through and see which ones have an x plus 2 factor. So this would not be good. This would not be good. Okay, so we've ruled out these. So we know that's not an option anymore and that's not an option anymore. Okay, then um, let's go to this x equals 5. Okay, so this 0 of x equals 5, we could subtract that 5 back over. And then we get x minus 5 equals 0. So here's the factor that will show up. So we need x minus 5 as a factor. So this one is not good. So that means that it would be d. And you can check to make sure um, that 3 fourths is correct by looking at this and just solving it. So x 4x minus 3 equals 0, we would add 3 to both sides. So then you get 4x equals 3, and then you're going to divide by 4. So you would get x equals um, 3 fourths. So that's good. So a 0 of negative 2, positive 3 fourths, and positive 5. Number 3, the graph of this polynomial has 3x intercepts. What are they? So remember that x-intercepts are on the x-axis here, right? So they're on the x-axis. And on the x-axis, we know that the y value or the function, okay, f of x, is equal to 0. So that means that we could set these. So when we multiply numbers together, if they equal 0, one of the factors is 0. So to figure out these x-intercepts, we just set each of these factors to 0 and solve. So let me just get some lines in between here to separate these, but these are our zeros or our x-intercepts. So we'll just add 3 to both sides here. So you get 2x equals positive 3. Then you can divide by 2. So one of your x-intercepts is 3 halves. This one you're going to add 4 to both sides. So you would get x equals 4 as an intercept. And here we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So we get x equals negative 3. So those um, would be your three x-intercepts. Number four, match each sequence with one of the recursive definitions. Note that only the part of the def definition showing the relationship between the terms is given. So they're not telling you the starting term. Um, but so let's kind of look at um, what's going to be happening in these. So this is saying the previous term minus 4. So your rule is going to be that you're subtracting 4 from each term here. This one says you're going to take the previous term plus 0. C says we're going to do negative 1 half times the previous term. And D says we're going to be multiplying the previous term times 1. 
And we know that when we add zero to a term, it doesn't change it. Or when we multiply a term by one, it doesn't change it. So both of these are going to go with option number three, where it's staying as an eight, because then it's not changing. Um, then A, we're subtracting four. So let's take a look um, at this one. Seven minus four is three. Three minus four is negative one. Negative one minus four is negative five. So this one goes with number one. And then number two, if we do one times negative one half, we get negative one half. If we do negative one half times negative one half, we get positive one fourth. If we do positive one fourth times negative one half, we get negative one eighth. So this one is just multiplying by a negative half. So that is for C. Number five, Han is multiplying 10x to the fourth by 0.5x to the third, and he gets 5x to the seventh. He says that 0.5x to the third is not a polynomial because 0.5 is not an integer. What is the error in Han's thinking? Um, 0 0.5, whoops, is a coefficient, okay? So 0.5 or 0 0.5 is um, a coefficient. And coefficients can be neg or can be fractions. Or decimals, okay? Fractions are just decimals. So that's completely fine that a number in front of the variable is a fraction, okay? It's exponents that can't be fractions. So if that had happened to be in the actual exponent, then we would have a problem. So if it was you know, x to the 0. 0.5, this would be a problem, okay? But 0. 0.5x is totally fine. Number six, here are two expressions whose sum is a new expression. Select all values that we can put into the box so that a is a polynomial. So now this one is 6x to this box. So this is an exponent. So we can only have non-negative um, non-negative whole numbers okay so we can only have non-negative whole numbers so it can't be negative two it can't be negative one because it can't be negative it can't be negative 0.5 because it's not allowed to be negative or a decimal slash fraction okay so zero would be fine and I mean, I guess zero would cancel it out, but that's still a polynomial because then it would be six, okay? So zero is not negative. Um, it cannot be 0.5 because it can't be a fraction or a decimal, okay? It can be one and it can be two.